Like here's this like overflowing bowl of stress and anger and frustration and bitterness. And then I felt like I almost became your enemy. And now. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California. This sounds great. You sound amazing. I always sound amazing. It's the world famous. Everybody sitting off like BFS. Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? How are you doing today? You know, thank you so much for listening. And I am Chris. And I'm Christine. And welcome to episode 107 of the Chris and Christine Show. Do, 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 do. Fantastic. How are you doing today, baby? I guess the better question is, how are you doing? That fantastic oh. sounded a little less than fantastic. Yeah, truth be told, I have been sick. I've been under the weather for the last two weeks now. I've been totally sick. My voice was completely gone. It's still not quite there 100%, as yep, you can, we can tell. tell. I have like this nasally, like my nose has been plugged up. And my you sound like not just nasally, but like you've been coughing a lot. Like you have that like husky voice the rah 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 right it's my sexy radio voice i don't know if that's what you would call it audience but there you go yeah well this is how we get the sexy audience voice i think i had what i have bronchitis and maybe a cold and i did not have covid because i did have to go to the doctor and they did physically make me take a covid test and we did an at-home covid test yeah they have at-home covid tests these days who even knew that was even a thing yeah we actually had it like delivered to our door from walgreens it was super convenient i ordered it and it was here 45 minutes later. And so we took the at-home COVID test. That came out to be negative. We both took the test. I took one and Christine took one. And then uh, when I went to the doctor over the phone, they actually wanted me to take a COVID test before I even did anything, before I even checked me out or did anything to make sure they didn't have COVID because they want to just put everything on, blame everything as COVID related. Yeah, that was really difficult because like you went in and I, well, we did, you did the online um telehealth appointment and I told them it is not COVID. It is bronchitis or something like we know what we were exposed to because it was um, Ezekiel's father was sick and then sent Zeke down here and then Zeke got sick like second day he was with us and um, we were told when we went to go drop Zeke off it was just allergies come to find out a week later after we were both super sick that it was bronchitis so we told the doctor through the telehealth that it was an exposure to bronchitis, but then they still wouldn't diagnose you until you went and you had the COVID test. And then afterwards, you, you they called you with the results and they're like, you're negative for COVID. We're like, yeah, exactly. And then it was like crickets. And then you had to call back and be like, so do I get a diagnosis? Because if I can't, like, am I allowed to go to work? Can I go to work? And they were like, uh, the nurses were just like kind of giving you the runaround. And that was very frustrating. Right, it was. So basically, long story short, they gave me like half a week off of work um, because of half my... Half a week? It was basically a full week, just almost, minus one day. Almost a full week. happened. That week happened to line exactly with the week of Thanksgiving. So it was Thanksgiving week. I was supposed to be working and we were supposed to have all these interviews lined up that week. We had an interview every single day lined up that week. We had to cancel all of them. We are sorry. We're trying to reschedule as soon as we possibly can. But my voice, as you can hear right now, my voice was completely gone. I had no vocal cords you, at and, all. And, like Your voice is here now, but before you were like, rah, rah. And then you were so grumpy. Like, ladies, if you're listening right now, I don't know if your gentleman in your your significant other goes through this, but the man cold is a real thing. It's like ladies get colds. And I mean, in comparison, I got super sick. And then, you know, two days later, I was like bouncing back and Chris was expecting me to like wait on him and make him tea and of all course. of this. Come on now. Yeah. And I was sick and he's like, "What? what's wrong with you? I was like, I have the same thing that you have because I went to the doctor. But somehow you got over it like, like a, one day. Because I followed the doctor's instructions and I took all of the medicines. But as, they gave you antibiotics. No, they didn't. They gave me nothing but a hard time. They, oh, oh, that you've been <laughs> trying to do that all week. No, I didn't get antibiotics because it was viral. Um, I just took the over the counter stuff in the order that they required and it cleared it up pretty quickly. But I also 
didn't have the luxury of being sick like you did because luxury i think this is a luxury so being well, sick i, I think, think it's a fun so. thing i think so yes, sir, i like to take the luxury car with the sickness on the side thank you yeah because you were like um sitting on the couch and then i was like hey can i get your help with this one thing and mind you i was sick too and you're like I'm sick. I'm dying. And I was like, could you not watch that nasty show that I don't like? And you're like, I never could just sit and watch TV. And I was like, oh, so this is what we're doing. You're sit, you're sitting and watching TV. And, yeah, it's and funny because I, I never get a chance to sit down and actually watch television. Well, you know, no, you don't take any- the chance. You sit on your computer and you podcast the whole time. I don't podcast the whole time. I just do research and cool stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's basically and, basic, and also, I'm trying to figure out how to use this gear behind me. Like, how, what do these buttons do? How does okay, this, okay. What does this thing do? But the point is, you got to be sick and I didn't have the chance to be sick. I had like... One day where I could be down and then I had to be back online for work the very next day after that because I had a lot going on. So I couldn't take sick time from work because we'd had the vacation week the prior week and had a big thing that was going for the board and it was just a lot that was happening. So needless to say, while you're going back to work and you've had time to recover, I had to go back to work and still fought, fight the bronchitis on top of working for half of my vacation. Oh, so. yeah. Well, and taking care of you, which is like a whole different level of work. Well, you're just that, miserable when you're sick. You're miserable to be around when you're sick. Well, okay. First off, who really is fun when they're sick? <laughs> I'm just fine. I take care of myself and I'm quiet. I'm not needy. I just like bundle up with a blanket. You think that. No, it's the truth. Everybody the truth. thinks that. No, but. it's the truth. How often do you have to like take care of me when i'm sick you're just like throwing me a cup of coffee like here you well, go i take care of you every day baby so it's, it's, it's kind of like i mean whether you're sick sorry or that not was my sick, evil cackle it's all the same to me really baby so um your, but, your throat's sounding a little bit rough i think you need to get a little sip of water right there while i take over for a second so if y'all hear the sound of water bottles while we are working today podcasting today don't mind it. That's me reminding Chris that he needs to hydrate his vocal cords so that he doesn't lose his voice again. Right? Yeah, my voice was completely gone. I couldn't even like mutter any words. It was weird. I know, but then you were like very dramatic about it. You're like, babe, babe, I can't talk. It was like that. It was seriously. And I was like, well, then don't talk. Like, write me a message, text me. And you're like, but I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like, you're losing your voice. You're like, uh, uh. <laughs> well, thank you for that dramatic yeah. interpretation of my. Yes, thank you. My, then the Oscar goes to Christine, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much dead on um, exactly what I sounded like. But the week prior to that, we were on vacation, and I took the week off, my very last week of vacation for 2021 until next year. So, but the good news is next well, year next I've already year picked, meaning a, I like picked January. My, yeah, no. Yes, but what I was trying to say was is that uh, next year, 2022, I've already picked out my schedule vacation for the following year, for 2022, because every year my work, uh, right around this time of year, we get to pick our schedules we're going to work for next year, and then right after that, after the schedules have been picked, we get to pick our actual vacations, the weeks of vacations or days off you want for the following year. It has to be picked out one year in advance, so... Um, One year in advance. You know, every time you say picking it out for next year, it always throws me off because in education, we go based off of the fiscal year, which is July 1 to June 30th. And it's like the school year. Okay. Can I, yeah. But for me, it's like anytime you say you've picked it for the year, it totally throws me off because for any of the educators out there, you know that you think of a year kind of differently. Like there's the calendar year, but then there's like the work year slash school year, which for us is like july to june and so when you say like i pick my stuff a year in advance i'll like pick in may for the next school year cycle and so you pick yours a few months before which actually does allow us to coordinate but right well well, other jobs i've had in the past when i pick our vacation it was like you would kind of pick it as you went along so say next month you wanted to take a week off if you have vacation on the books you'd ask for it now Mm -hmm. and then you'd like be either approved or disapproved based on if somebody else had that time off or not. You didn't really know if somebody else picked it or not. So you just kind of like threw your hat in the ring and say, yeah, I want to take the you know first week of January off or whatever. And then you like put in for it and then either come back yes or no. 
And that's kind of how my vacations went at other jobs I've had. This is the first time I've had a job where you actually had to pick out your vacation, plan it out in advance. So, mm-hmm. so now I'm thinking, what do I want to do during summer? What week off in summer do I want to take? Mm-hmm. What week off for my birthday? I am taking four weeks off next year. I think I took like five or eight weeks off this year. It was crazy. That's crazy. Plus, you were sick for a couple of weeks. Well, maybe including some of the weeks, I guess. Some of those sick weeks, I'm kind of including in that. That's you know, not vacation. Though. I, it's That's true. Like, it's really not. But Well, maybe it's a vacation for you. It's not for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, so that's interesting that you say that you're taking like four weeks off um, on vacation. Do you have any plans of things that you want to do in the upcoming year? You know, you are such a such a lovely person to travel with i know huh? travel buddy chris oh my gosh if ladies and gentlemen if we haven't already covered this on the podcast chris is one of the most cantankerous travelers on the face why of the is it when i travel bad things happen to me i don't think i think that you are it's like law of attraction you like put it out to the universe because you always say everything bad always happens to me everything bad everything always breaks for me and i'm like what if you just said like my world is great and you started to think like positively would that attract more positivity to your life no because the negativity would be like wait i see what you're doing we're gonna get in there and double down no see that is such a toxic mindset because you think like even if something good is gonna happen to you that like the end is near right yeah and i and i do believe but the thing is that when i do travel i do get sick too it's just kind of weird i get sick when i travel and we did travel recently and but it's not because we traveled that you got sick. It was because you were exposed to something before we traveled. And then traveling sick. like like um, put it in like full throttle, you know, like it really kicked up the dosage. It was like a catalyst traveling to me. Oh, my gosh. Me he, that is not that's not appropriate reasoning. Right I am there. a scientist, so I can speak on this. You are a doctor. <laughs> I'm a scientist. So. The science of what? Scientology. OK, Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the space aliens are coming down. It was all the aliens fault. And the good vibes. Yeah. Well, no, seriously. Do you have any plans of places you want to go in the upcoming year of travel vacation time? Well, I do get four weeks of vacation allotted per year now. And so what I did was I decided I don't, I don't pick all four weeks at the same time. Mm-hmm. I do spread them out. I'm not stupid. You know, I mean, he would take a whole month off. That'd be kind of weird. Uh, but, I did one time, but go ahead. Okay. Well, so I, I'm like figuring out there's definitely three guaranteed weeks I want to take off during every year. One for my birthday, one during the middle of July, because I know the kids are out of school during July. So I figure one week during summer, we can take a summer vacation. Like this last year, we went to Bass Lake and Yosemite. The year before that, we went up to Zion. Mm-hmm. And the year before that, what did we do before that? I forget. But No, uh, we didn't go anywhere before that. We okay. didn't do. It was just those two. So, and I take one off for, that's my summer vacation during summer. And then I take one for my birthday week in case we decide to do something fun for my birthday. They like went to Hawaii that one year or, or something like that. Oh, is that what it is? It's like trying to create a blank slate so that I have to fill it for you? Yes. Oh my gosh. You are <laughs> too much. Okay. So from now on, you're going to take a week off around my birthday and plan a trip for me. Ooh, I'm out of weeks, baby. I, I- <laughs> Oh, and you know what? That's the funny thing is you were like, well, I have uh, one more week that I can take. And I was like, well, you can either take my birthday week or spring break. And what did you choose? I chose spring break. Yeah, you turkey. I figure I figure I asked Christine, well, what week are the kids out of school so I can figure out like like which. No, I gave you the option, though, to take my birthday week or spring break. And then you came back with, well, what week are the kids off of school? And then I gave you the that week. And then you sent it to me that you took that week off. And I was like, oh, so he takes a week off for his birthday, but tells me, oh, if I'm working, oh, well. But I'm off for your birthday anyways, because it's like a weekend or something like Is that. It? Yeah, it's like Sunday, I think. All right. So what are you planning for me? I don't know. It's so far in advance. I can um, figure that out. Yeah. You need to plan ahead because. I never plan anything ahead. You know that, right? Well, I've, you know, been through a lot with you over the last <laughs> week. Yeah, last, last, yeah, last, day, last couple of days. Last <laughs> <laughs> so I took a week off for spring break. So in case we do anything with the kids, because they're off spring break, took one week off during summer for a summer vacation, took one week off for my birthday week. And then the last week I'm taking off is for our anniversary week, just like I did this year for our anniversary. Well, it's like the vacation we went on just recently. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about that right after this. Hey, thank you so much for being a loyal listener of the Chris and Christine show. And as that you are a loyal listener, we have a very fun opportunity for you to get involved with the show. Ooh, tell me more. If you like to get exclusive content you can't get anywhere else 
and to receive free merchandise shipped to you every single month. Ooh, I want that. Then head over to patreon.com slash the Chris and Christine show. That is patreon.com slash the Chris and Christine show. Hey, so just in case everybody knows, Christine, you have your own business. It's called Christine Smith Designs. Now, in a nutshell, what is it exactly? Well, um, for those that have been following along, thank you. So this might be a repeat for you. But Christine Smith Designs is a wedding event and floral design p- business that I have. Um, so I pr- I provide floral designage, I guess. Is that even a word? Designage? Uh, floral designs for weddings, um, wedding planning, wedding coordination. Uh, and my approach, I call it the wedding bestie approach. It's like becoming the best friend of the couple along their journey to help them uh, make their wedding day a huge success. Because with weddings, it's very stressful, especially if you try to pull it off all by yourself. Do people actually try to do that? Like, like I can figure this out. I can you know, design everything and put everything together all by themselves, the bride and groom. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think I tried to do that my first my first marriage. And then my former in-laws brought on a wedding coordinator for the last, like, couple of weeks. And she did all of the setup and the decoration the day of. And then we just had to, like, take down the decorations at the end. And it was super helpful. And so, um, yeah, I did, like, all the DIY centerpieces and all of that kind of stuff. And so... Um, people do it. It's just very stressful, especially if you have like a large guest list and a lot of moving parts. So uh, last two weeks ago, you had a um, potential bride come to you via what the Facebook uh, market group or something? Well, I mean, it was several months ago that she found me and it was on a special Facebook group called San Diego Weddings. And so this was a Facebook group that one of my brides turned friends uh, invited me to join back in like, I don't know, June. And um, I've met a lot of really cool people and a lot of my brides um, have found me through that group. And so uh, this gal, she found me and she lives in the Lancaster area, but was having- Lancaster area. Now, where is that on the map? That's like, is that off the 15 or the- Five? Where is no, it? it's it's like way over on the way to like the desert. So you have to go over well, like East Desert. It's like North Desert, right? No, it's like by Death Valley. No, Northeast. It's um like you go towards like Castaic, Pal- and then you branch out towards Palmdale area, and Lancaster is on the way there. My dad used to do a lot of work there when I was younger, but. They weren't getting married there. They were having a destination wedding Ooh. in Lake Arrowhead. And so they reached out and asked if I would be the wedding coordinator, not the floral designer. And they just needed help for like the couple of weeks leading up to the wedding and then on the day of to help get everything set up and then torn down. And so my policy is that anything that's outside of like 75, 80 miles from San Diego, I have to charge a travel fee because that's going to require me to stay in that area at least the night before the wedding because right. I all of my packages include coordinating a wedding rehearsal and then coordinating the day of. And so I can't feasibly be there for a wedding rehearsal, drive two hours or three hours home, depending on the location, and then go back and repeat that the next morning. So um, this nice couple, they really wanted to work with me. And so they contracted with me to be their destination wedding coordinator and compensated me for my travel. So that Basically was Basically really your, your gas and at least one night stay. Yeah, at, at the, least one night stay. The lodge or the cabin lodge that we stayed at. Yeah, I typically look at what the accommodations are around the area to see like I'm, I try to be very reasonable. So it's not like look for like a five star hotel. It's like Sim- what, what's simple and what'll get the job done where I can sleep. And it just so happened that their wedding was taking place at this really cute little cabin resort called um, Pine Rose Cabins in Arrowhead. And it was super adorable. And they had this little studio cabin that was like $120, $130 a night. And I thought, well, this is so cute. And you know, it was on our anniversary week early. They were having a Tuesday wedding, which I'd already taken that week. Yeah, that seems kind of weird, by the way. Tuesday wedding. Um, do people normally have weddings on Tuesdays? No, they don't. But I was already off on vacation because I'd taken the time off because you were going to take me to Mexico for our anniversary. But 
with all of the COVID stuff coming back up and all of the testing requirements and everything, it was just a lot of logistical headache. And so we decided to not do the Mexico vacation. And so it just worked out perfectly because, you know, you were off of work, I was off of work. And I thought, well, you know, I can de- definitely take this job, but hey, Chris, do you want to come along with me and we can have a little like honeymoon? Because technically, I mean, we had a little mini moon, but we haven't really had a honeymoon if you think about it. Well, we had a uh, couple nights stay at the uh, in Coronado. Yeah, that's technically considered like a mini moon. Like well, a was, honeymoon yeah. is like far away travel or like five or seven days where you actually like get to get away and just like unplug. No and kids or nothing, huh? Well, a honeymoon, you wouldn't have your children with you. I know. I'm just saying. I know. So this was kind of like a little like honeymoon slash work trip, right? Absolutely. So we travel up. We leave on a... Monday. Monday, We left Monday. We left Monday morning or midday Monday. We drove all the way up there to Lake Arrowhead, which happens to be in the high elevation. I believe we checked it out. What was it, like 52? It was the same elevation as Denver, but we need to back up because... Back up to where? We need to back up because you were like, well, we got on the road. Well, let's be honest. Something major happened, and we alluded to it in the last episode that we did live, but something major happened before we even got on the road, and it almost led to Chris choosing not to go with me, which I was devastated about. No, but I'm confused. What was it? Um, well, it was a computer issue. Oh, the MacBook Pro, how somehow I accidentally locked myself out of my own MacBook computer and I had to call Apple support. Okay, but let's talk about how you accidentally locked yourself out. So Chris was like, adamant that his password was this specific password and he kept putting it in and first thing in the morning i i'd said to him okay in the morning honey we've got to be really strategic because we have to get on the road by a certain time i need you to get up can you please get the kids ready get them to school and then when you come home shower pack and we're gonna go like we don't have time for anything else That's well basically what i did yeah well chris decided to get up in the morning and come down to the computer and try to do computer work while the kids were kind of moseying around um, to promote the podcast that we'd released, the episode we released the night before. But what ended up happening is he thought he remembered his password. How can that be possible? I've been typing the same password in, like for since I've had the computer. Now all of a sudden it changed itself. What's up with that? It didn't change itself. You added extra characters to it that did not belong because you keep all of your your passwords in a safe place electronically and when you went back and looked at it you were like uh oops i think i was doing the wrong password. i think i had typed in the wrong password but that, multiple times and but I guess, that oops came like seven days afterwards and the funny thing is about apple products if you ever know this or not if you type in the wrong password so many times in a row it completely like shuts you down for like i'll say like Please enter it and fi- wait five minutes to enter it or 10 minutes or an hour or whatever it may be. And eventually, if you enter it so many times, you're completely locked out, like completely wiped out. And I think um, I remember hearing a story about this many years ago. Uh, it was on social media, I believe, or the news where a son, like he's maybe five or three years old, was playing with his father's iPad. And he was incorrectly typing the password in so many times. <laughs> the actual Apple, like it'll say on the screen, you have to wait how many days or weeks before you can re-enter the password again. In this particular case, it said like 700 years <laughs> <laughs> or something like that because he typed it in so many times incorrectly. And that's kind of what started happening to me. It didn't say that much time. It just said mm-hmm. that you were completely locked out of the account. So I had to call Apple Care and ask them, what, what, what do I do? What do I do? And they suggested, well, they said, well, basically what we got to do is we got to wipe out the entire computer and start from scratch yeah. all over again. I'm like, ugh. Well, well I, before that, before you even got to that Apple Care, you chicken little sky is falling. Your whole world was crumbling because you couldn't access your computer, which you were not going to take with us on our trip. And that anyways. was my whole point of buying the stupid computer in the first place, was so I could take it on this trip. No, it wasn't. It was not the purpose behind it, but you freaked out. You completely lost it. And then you insisted that I stop what I was doing to come and fix your computer because I know. Well, you're the Apple whiz in the house. This is exactly what you said to me. So I sat down and I started going through everything and I'm like, oh, this is not, no, this is not going to work. This is like I was going through the setup screen and everything that I normally would do to like 
refresh it, it was like, you have to wipe the computer completely because we can't log you in using this password. And so then I was like, well, honey, you're just going to have to leave it until we come back. And that's when the world caved in. When I said the words, you're just going to have to leave it like that and we'll get it fixed when I we come home. I cannot handle that. I can't handle just leaving something. And what did that scenario look like, Chris? With me getting upset? Well, what does you upset look like? Oh, a, a joyful sunflower and rainbows. No. <laughs> it was a miserable day. And it was... Yeah, I I don't even have words to describe it. Like, imagine friends, and I love you dearly, Chris, and you know this, but imagine like your worst two year old terrible two temper Wait, tantrum. That's, call me two year old two year old temper tantrum, and like absent of falling on the ground, um, you almost did. Like it was everything else, you know, very very angry, and so I had a choice. It was like okay. I gave us a cushion of an hour so we could stop for lunch on the way. So I either bypass the lunch break and let him handle this right now, or we go and he's absolutely a bear to be around for the next four days. <laughs> and so yeah. we got on the phone with Apple and what'd they say? Well, they talk and everybody, we tried all the passwords, nothing was working. We tried all kinds of different things and that's not working. And they said, try this and try that. Now open the screen. Now do this and do that. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm doing that, but it's going back to where it was before. Like, okay, does it work now? Uh, no. Does it work now? Uh, no. Okay. Well, the only thing we have for you to do is you got to erase the entire thing and reinstall the uh, Mac OS, which is the operating software, back onto the computer and start off fresh with like a, as if it's a brand new computer. Now, the only good news is, is that I had a backup hard drive. And so any major stuff I was working on had saved to the backup hard drive, not on the computer. The computer did have a few things on it. It had a few programs that I had um, downloaded, like for podcasting and things like that. So I had to just have reinstall those once it was completely wiped out, re-log in, all brand new, like it's a brand new computer mm -hmm. all over again. And then I had to um, reinstall the operating, the software that I use to podcast and mm -hmm. edit and things like that. So, well, on this podcast, we've always promised to like be honest with you all and be transparent. And we've said before that our podcast is a little bit like therapy. So, this is the Chris and Christine therapy session for today. So, let's just say to, you know, sparing all of the details. After Chris got his computer like starting to like re-update or whatever and plugged it in and all of that, uh, he finally agreed very reluctantly to get on the road with me. And at this point, I would say on a level of one to furious, like I was bordering on that furious because first of all, I know it was outside of our control, but like sometimes we've just got to let things go and have to move on and say, okay, I'm going to come back to this. But I think that one of the things that I've struggled with learning how to manage in our relationship is that like you're unable to leave something and it's not like a dig on you. It's just like, like cognitively you have to see it through. And that creates a lot of like friction in our relationship. And what it does for me too, I think I think part of that reason why for me personally is that because I have a lot of things going on in my wheelhouse, like I'm spinning a lot of plates, that if I put something like say you're cooking in a kitchen and you have something in the back burner, essentially, like this MacBook computer, mm -hmm. you put it in the back burner, it's like, hey, we're not gonna put it on hold, but it's still cook in my mind, it's the pot it's still boiling, but I'm gonna go on vacation, let that pot boil. What happens then? The house burns down. That's how that's how it feels to me mm -hmm. when when I when I put something in, when I don't finish a project and let it just kind of hang there, it becomes like a hanging project. So now it's like your four projects pass that project, mm -hmm. and now you're like overwhelmed because you have so much you have to do now instead of just taking it one step at a time. I work in a very systematic way. That's why I work at work. I'm the same exact way. I yeah. do things in a very systematic, like everything has to happen one, two, three, four. It has to happen in steps. And and if you skip a step or go over an entire section. It really throws you off. It, it, like, it, it, it like paralyzes you. It does. And I have to go back to the beginning and finish it before I move on to the next thing. That's probably why I'm so good at what I do for work. It's why I do things very in, in a very um, linear way mm -hmm. that it's um, – you know, I just do things that way and, and it works out for me that way when I, I, I mean, I can handle multitasking to a degree, 
But when there's a lot of different things moving, pulling me in different directions mm-hmm. away from away from things that I'm already working on, that frustrates me more than anything in the world. Yeah, and you kind of shut down, don't you? Um, I don't know if I shut down. I just get very upset. Yeah, and and, and it's it's almost like somebody threw a wrench in my gears, and my whole entire engine of my whole entire <laughs> self yeah. just comes crashing to a stalt, and, and you know, and and I'm just like throws a wrench. Yeah, as, like as here's this and like so in our relationship that bowl of can be stress super challenging and to anger think of, like, and frustration and bitterness multiple and then kids and I felt like, like I having to do different enemies. things. And so, you know, sometimes it gets very frustrating to me because if you need to stay very linear and there's things that are happening outside of that line, I have to deal with all of the rest of the stuff to kind of straighten it out for you. So that it doesn't overwhelm you. And I think like on that day when we were trying to get ready to go and I was really looking forward to going up for this wedding for two reasons. The first was I was really excited to work with this couple who I hadn't met in person. And then the second is like I was really excited to get away with you because we'd been going through so much with the move and so much stress and pressure And I was walking into this day like feeling super prepared and non-stressed and like ready to just like ease into the wedding and just be excited. And then like here's this like overflowing bowl of stress and anger and frustration and bitterness. And then I felt like I almost became your enemy. And that made it really difficult on that day. No, I'm never. I'm never like say that you're my enemy or everything's. I'm always upset at the situation around me. Like I figure that like you aren't the exact cause of the pain and suffering. It's like it's like everything I do, like everything I touch and do, I break, and nothing seems to work for me. And the world around me is just crumbling down, and I'm super upset and emotional. And I just want to just get one thing fixed to move on to the next thing, just so I can have this like perfect balance yeah. of, of of it's like a balance beam where i feel like i wanted to keep the balance very you know balanced mm-hmm. but yet the world is crashing on one side which is kind of throwing my balance off right and now i have to like figure out how to fix it and get get it back to normal yeah and that's how i how i run my life and i'm I, sorry i'm just a space cadet sometimes i'm crazy yeah like well that. i think that you know as i've been reflecting on it because we've had a couple of weeks to kind of simmer on this and that's why we thought it was a real actual really important topic to talk about is um i think we've shared before i came out of a relationship where um there was codependency um because of i, I call it like survival based codependency when you find individuals that have gone through um domestic violence or any type of abusive relationships or been with a partner who was in some form of addiction, uh, sometimes you have to anticipate their moves and you figure out how to navigate around their emotions so that you're not constantly like being victimized by it. And so one of the things that I've learned how to do is to like avoid or insulate myself from those extreme emotions And so what I have found happens in, and I think this is kind of part of the baggage that I bring into our relationship is that like when you get those really big emotions, not the the happy ones, but those really big negative emotions, I immediately go into fight or flight. And so imagine that situation when you're in this big emotional state of anger and frustration in your world, like the sky, literally chicken little, the sky is falling for you in your world. Like you feel like everything's crashing down around you. And then in my mind, I take that on as being directed towards me because I'm not used to those big emotions not being targeted at me. And then we just have a really unhealthy dance happening. (laughs) Right? Uh, Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, and yeah, and so we get into that situation, and it's kind of like this n- dance of negativity, and then like we don't always know how to lift ourselves out of it, and so you know we had this, we'll just call it that dance. It's not physical. We never know. It's not like that. It, we just get very frustrated with each other, and so 
you know, finally you agreed to go because you were driving me to this <laughs> trip. Yeah, we, we drove the um, my truck. Originally, we were going right. to take Christine's car, but I said, you know what? We haven't taken the truck very – the truck really hasn't gone anywhere. And we had stuff we had to haul that needed to be, like, in the truck bed anyways. And now that I think about it, taking the four-wheel drive up there into the mountains, there were a lot of other trucks like my truck yeah. up there. It was, like, almost like a fit right in mm-hmm. place, like a four-wheel drive vehicle fit perfectly in the mountains up in the wilderness yeah. up there. So we did take the truck, and it was a nice little drive. It only took a half a tank of gas all the way up and back. Yeah, and so we actually agreed to just drive in silence. I think that that was the best move for us. So it was like two and a half hours of just being quiet. And I think what that allows is one of the things that I've learned about the brain is whenever you're triggered into that fight or flight mode, it activates this specific part of your brain where it clouds any of your rational thinking for like a good hour or two. And so whenever I'm in that fight or flight and I say, I think I just need silence for a bit, that's my gift to my brain to say like, okay, you're safe. You need to calm down. But entering back into a conversation for me when I'm triggered like that into fight or flight mode, it's just kind of like it, it'll it continue to spiral. And so, you know, some people will say like, in relationships, never go to bed angry. And I completely disagree with that because I feel like when one of the partners is in, um, they call it your amygdala. When your amygdala is fired up into fight, flight, freeze mode, you can't, you're not capable of rational, calm thought at that time. And so sometimes the best gift to do to give your brain and your partner is to just say, I'm tired. I don't think I can process this right now. I need to sleep. Or like for me, which I did sleep in the car the whole way basically, was um, just to be quiet. And so by the time we arrived, I think I was like settled and like a little bit calmer. And then you were like exhausted from the emotional output of the day. Uh, and and the drive itself too. Yeah. And, and being up early and going to a place I've never been. And by the way, Lake Arrowhead sits at the top of the mountains. It is very, very high elevation. So you climb this road. And this road, it's like this twisty, windy, like two lane road. Or maybe it's one, I guess one lane. One lane each way. Yeah. yeah so two lanes total. And it's on the side of a cliff and it gets higher and higher up this yeah, they mountain. actually call it like the ridge, like something ridge, right? Wasn't it? Uh, like rim, of, rim of the world. Rim of the world. Yeah. And, highway. And you were like literally above the clouds. <laughs> the rim of the world. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you're on this cliff. It's like those roads, like some of those movies you see, like those James Bond movies mm-hmm. where they're doing this chase scene down this mountain and the ha- car goes over the side of the mountain right. and stuff and they're racing and shooting guns. It's like a road like that. Right. And so it's very narrow, very tight turns on this road up this mountain. And by the way, once you get at the Lake Arrowhead area, there is not a single piece piece of straight road anywhere it is all 30 miles an hour twist and turn the entire area oh well when we drove through blue jay there was like a quarter mile of straight road (laughs) yeah top speed 40 miles an hour maybe (laughs) if you were lucky and then you gotta do a hairpin turn at 20 miles an hour at the other end but uh getting up there just driving on a road like that can be very exhausting twist turn break twist turn break and you're kind of watching the turns and you're kind of don't go too fast slow down you know and, and the curves and there's so many curves oh my goodness And then on top of that, having this emotional exhaustion from like being very upset about everything that had happened in that morning. So by the time we arrived to our little cabin, it was time for us to unload and for me to head over. Like we didn't even have time to stop for lunch because of the the series of unfortunate events that happened in the morning. So, you know, we get to Arrowhead, we're hangry. And uh, we get to the cutest little cabin, but because Chris is hangry, all that he can see is like, this is small. Well, not just that. This is rustic. And I don't like those beams up there. And you were, you were in a mood. Yeah. Well, first off, I don't travel well. And secondly, also too, when I land to a place, get into a new town or a new um, spot we're going to stay at, I'm like, first thing is, where's the food places at? Where's everything at? When you ask the guy at the front desk, where's the food? Oh, you just drive down the road. But unfortunately, these old twisty mountain roads, there's not a lot. There's not a lot in these towns. Okay. Well, first of all, the guy said, okay, if you go up about one minute up the road, there's a convenience store that just has like some basic snacks. But if you're looking for real food, you're going to need to go about a mile beyond that. Well, all Chris heard was one mile one or one or two minutes away, there's food. And so I go over to the rehearsal to get started working. And then you head off in the car to go get yourself food. 
And, and I'm, dri- I'm driving around this town and I'm like looking around. It's all mountains and wilderness and forest and nothing. Well, first of all, when you say driving around, you drove two minutes away. And then I start getting panic texts saying that you're lost and that you're almost to Palm Springs. Yeah, I don't know where I'm at, by the way. <laughs> I'm driving around and I'm and I'm trying to like use my GPS on my truck to find food. And it's telling me, okay, the nearest uh, food is like in Palm Springs. I'm like... Why is it taking me over here? I'm following the map and the stupid thing on the GPS. And I'm like, this can't be right. So I turn off, pull over, and I reset. And I start driving around. I'm like, now I'm thinking I'm lost. I don't know where I'm in. They're trying to send me to Palm Springs. And I'm trying to find a bite to eat. I'm looking for, there's got to be a McDonald's or something around here. And there isn't. There's like nothing. So, But I did come across a Shell gas station. In the middle of nowhere, the little you come middle the, of nowhere, three minutes away from the cabin. Yeah, but you come around this little bend, and there's a Shell gas station, and there's like a couple of little shops. I don't know what it was, maybe a fire station or something. And I see the Shell gas station. Inside the Shell gas station, there was, lo and behold, a subway. Why are you breathing so heavy? So I went. To the, oh, is that for dramatic effect? Yeah. So Yo, okay, I went and grabbed a subway sandwich at the subway in the <laughs> Shell gas station. And it, what did you bring back for me to eat? Uh, love. <laughs> <laughs> and hope <laughs> I can't survive on love. So, anyways, I get this panicked uh, text message and call, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, he's lost!" And I was like, "Okay, well, just put in your GPS where we're staying. Come back to where we're staying. Do you remember where we're staying?" And your answer was, "No, I don't know where we're at." <laughs> So I, I'm I don't like, know the, I don't know the name of the cabin. So I, was like, I, I don't know I don't know what town we're in. I, I, I don't even know what road we're living on. I, I don't even know. I, I I don't see nothing. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna send you the address so that you can at least get back here. And then you went back to the cabin and I think you took a nap and I was able to get so much done for the wedding. And you know, here it's a really cute place. And so I was like, okay, after I was done with the rehearsal and setting up, I was like, let's go find some food. So then we proceed to drive and I had the GPS going because I actually listened to the guy at the check-in that said, okay, if you go into town, there's this um, well, wait, diner I place. I couldn't find the town. Like I'm but, driving, like where's the town? But he gave us the name of the diner and he gave us the name of the grocery store. And I'd said to you, Chris, put in Jensen's Market in Blue Jay and you put in Jensen's Market and it gave you Palm Springs. But, right. but I said Jensen's Market in Blue Jay. And so I put that in and I was like, okay, so he said like just across the street, there's these other places. So we went to this little diner and it was like a little hole in the wall. It was cute and um, had some yummy food. And then we went to the grocery store, which is basically like double Whole Foods prices, but not necessarily Whole so Foods type of what, selection. What Christine's <laughs> saying is that it's a little pricier, almost like as expensive as Hawaii. Is that what I was saying? Basically. No, but I spent $115 on two little bags of groceries and one bundle of firewood and a Duraflame log. Yeah, because the, the cabin we're staying in did have an actual fireplace, which I think I almost burnt the house down. <laughs> because after we were using the fireplace, I noticed it had this black stream of like black smoke uh, stain on the side Okay, of well, the first wall. of all, okay, <laughs> we have to give context. So it was really cold up there. And I when I say really cold, like it was down in the 30s and 40s in the evening. I know, people in Minnesota, you're probably laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> like cold we're but, talking about but chris was like um wanting to get a fire in the fireplace and then kept he always is cold i'm always hot it's like the biggest struggle in our relationship and so after the fire was going and we put the last set of logs on he was asking for the heater earlier so i turned on the heater but i couldn't get it to click on so i thought it wasn't working so i just like Kept adjusting the temperature until it would click on, and then I fell asleep. And then what happened at 2 o'clock in the morning? I woke up with this splitting headache. I was burning up hot. That's the problem when they travel to places like this. When we went over to Utah that first time in that tent, remember? And that we went glamping. We had the um, the log burning the wood st- stove. Yeah, yeah, inside there. I, and I put wood in there and did my thing. And it was cold there, too. But... Um, you don't have really have a way to adjust the temperature when you do like a wood burning stove or logs or. And you're it. supposed to keep a window open for ventilation, which Chris refused to do. So here we are. I'm an asthmatic, and he gets these chronic headaches, and we're sleeping all night. And the wood fireplace had been burning, and so we're sitting I, I there the sucking smoke. in ash and smoke. Right, I smoke and it. then the heater had like taken the room temperature to like 79 or 87 degrees <laughs> oh so we're burning up at a super bad headache like lasted the entire day the, next, the whole day and i didn't sleep well 
Oh, that, that was not the day of the wedding, right? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. So, but the wedding actual place was not that far from our cabin. It was at another cabin. Yeah, it was like 100 feet away. And this cabin had like multiple little like uh, patios kind of mm-hmm. attached to it, to the backyard area. And this wonderful creek and a full-on stream and a full-on like miniature lake. And a little a gazebo pond. and wooden benches. And it was so freaking adorable. And in that lake and in that little gazebo, like little lake pond, they had the biggest koi fish i've ever seen in my life <laughs> these things are like three foot koi fish i know three feet long like dolphins i mean oh my gosh you're so over exaggerating they, but were, they were long. they were like two feet yeah for sure there was big massive koi fish in the pond and they had a patio and the wedding was there it was a cute little venue and i thought it was adorable oh well, thank you and you know it it had a couple of little hiccups but um not things that i could have anticipated it was you know some vendors that didn't follow up on their timeline and stuff like that. But it ended up being a beautiful day. And I will say that even though you had a headache, you came through like gangbusters to be my assistant. And you like came and you were helping me out with um, helping the caterer unload her food and like asking what you could do. And I thought it was so cute that you even packed like a black button up shirt so that you look nice. Well, there's a thing. If I was going to be at this wedding, I got to at least look appropriate. You know, I don't want to Oh, you thought you were a guest. I I did think I was a guest. Like, hey, (laughs) what's that? What's that? Are you on? Are you on the bride or groom? Uh, Both. (laughs) (laughs) But you helped me get all of the decorations down that were um, fastened up high that I normally would have to use a ladder with. And, um, it was really fun. We went the next that night. We went into town to get some more firewood or something. Oh, we went to. Oh no, we went to an Italian restaurant that night because the wedding was at twelve thirty in the afternoon. And on so a it Tuesday. Was, yeah, so it was a lunchtime reception. But I found out why it was on the Tuesday. It was because that was their three year dating anniversary. Oh, so it actually has more meaning than just a random Tuesday because they right. got a better. De- I thought it's because they got a better deal. Oh. No, yeah, and it was like little. They only had like 25, 30 guests, and they had live music, and it was really cute. Oh yeah, the live band was great. They had a full setup with guitars and and all those kinds of gear. They I, I saw they had a MacBook Pro. Yeah, they Sp- did. Speaking of which, all plugged into stuff, and <laughs> they had a mixer, all kinds. Of, I'm like, ooh, all that cool stuff they got for podcasting. Yeah, or and then, making music. Since it was like a little getaway for us, we did stay an extra night, and so when we drove into town that first night. I saw this super cute looking Italian restaurant and I said, Chris, can we go there tomorrow night? And so he drove me back there and we go into this. It was almost like a converted cabin, but you walk in and it's like stepping into a cafe in Italy with like the old stucco on the walls and the wine bottles and everybody in there that was working there was except for the girl was speaking Italian and it was like super authentic food and like warm and snuggly in there and it was fantastic i it, really loved that food it was great and um yeah we had italian food that night for dinner and um that was fantastic it was a fantastic journey you know traveling up through to lake arrowhead and the very next day when we did leave we got a chance to kind of drive around the town and go actually see the lake I'm like we're not going up to lake arrowhead and not seeing a lake <laughs> yeah we got to see the lake it's like it's like your thing, you know, you got to do that. Mm-hmm. It's like when you go to Disneyland, you got to see the castle. Right. You know, so we did drive around and did check out the lake, but it was kind of quiet over then that lake town. When we finally went over to the lake. Yeah. Itself. And they had like a shopping center. And so I was like, oh, let's go do some shopping. And what's so funny is we walked into this little coffee shop to get coffee because I hadn't had coffee for that morning before we left. And the girl that was making coffee, I looked at her and I said, you look so familiar to me. Do you work at the Italian restaurant? And she said, yes, she was the gal that was our hostess and busting our table the, the night, night before. before. <laughs> and, then, and then she's working at the uh, coffee at the, shop. At yeah. The, uh, yeah. It's like a little Hallmark movie. But we did a little bit of Christmas shopping around there for some of our family. And I got some new sunglasses. We got some ornaments for our tree. And then we just kind of made our way back slowly. And I convinced you to take me to Cracker Barrel. Yes, you know, uh, we, don't, we don't have Cracker Barrels down here in the San Diego, L.A. I think, does L.A. even have any Cracker Barrels? I think there's one. There's one. Okay. Like, t- well, kind definitely, of in the, like, the LAX area. Well, definitely there's none in San Diego. Right. So I have to, I hear all the rave about this whole Cracker Barrel. What is this Cracker Barrel I hear all about? Christine, you had one up in Fresno area, right? No, I went to Cracker Barrel. I got familiar with it when I lived out in the Midwest and I went to school out there. And I was introduced to it. And they have really great home style food. 
And it's just, it's really good, like home cooking. And I love it because it's just like comfort, comfort food. Yeah, comfort and food. I love the little ambiance there. It's just like very kind of rustic-y and they have cute little shop, like a little souvenir shop. And then when I go and visit my best friend, Kira, we've gone to Cracker Barrel too. But I know that your mom is a huge Cracker Barrel Oh, she Barrel loves fan. it. You know, when she when they had a house in Arizona, they had a house in uh, Williams, Arizona, mm-hmm. which is probably about uh, outside of Flagstaff area. Okay. And, I, and I believe in that area, somewhere over there, was whether it was Flagstaff or on the way to Flagstaff, there was a Cracker Barrel okay. out in that area. And they used to love going over there and they rave about it all the time. Yeah. Well, we stopped there and fortunately there wasn't really a wait. So we were able to get seated. And then we sat down and ordered food. And then you, I think you had like chicken pot pie, right? Yeah. Yeah. I figure if I'm going to go comfort food, I'm not a big fan of mac and cheese or anything like that. So for me, it's always like a pot pie. I love a good chicken pot pie. So how was Cracker Barrel? It's actually pretty good. The pot pie. It was actually pretty good. Okay. As you were eating it, you were like almost doing a little food dance. I was like, mm, 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 mm. that's so you good. You're like, oh, I get it. You said, I get the hype. Yeah, I totally said that. So for the first bite, I'm like, yeah, I get it now. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of what I say when I go to a restaurant and I'm like, what is this place all hype about? And they take the one bite of whatever that single dish is and you're like, oh, yeah. I, I get the hype. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand now. It was so yummy. And then um, we got back on the road and made our way home and then – We just, we got, I started getting sick like the next day, but Chris, we think that he was just run down from the beginning and then it just kind of after his body rested, like the viral load kind of kicked in and then uh, fortunately you weren't really around the wedding guests very much at all. Um, And so you were just sleeping mostly in the cabin and then, I don't know, we... Got real sick the next couple of days here at home and um, – Now, the first weekend. So, we're talking – this is all throughout the week. So, by the time the weekend hit, like Saturday, Sunday, I was completely like really sick, especially Monday. It really hit me really hard Monday. So, Sunday into Monday is when I was like, oh, no, this is something more serious than a simple like sniffle. This right. Is, this is something that I have to like – call a doctor about this well you didn't want to call the doctor you just said i'm dying and i was like you need to get that's to my the doctor. that's my excuse my, that's my code word for me when i say i'm dying that's code for um i need to see a doctor yeah so what's gonna happen when you're really dying are you just gonna be silent no when i say i'm really dying it means i need to see the mortician <laughs> well thankfully we were able to get a little bit of rest and unfortunately you did have to miss the majority of the following week of work but uh we were able to kind of get you on the mend a little bit more And fortunately, because you got sick earlier and you were able to kind of be at home and isolating, we were able to have just a tiny Thanksgiving with just your parents over. And um, we did that on Thursday of this week, right? Right. Well, I was off of work because I was sick and I was basically keeping it pretty on the down low for the most of the week. And hey, speaking of that trip up to Lake Arrowhead, if you would like to actually physically see what we saw, if you'd like to see a video that we made oh, yeah. while we're up there on the trip running around the town of Lake Arrowhead, us walking into the coffee shop and us walking around the lake and seeing the lake itself, and us actually driving around these crazy roads <laughs> they were talking about, you can head over to patreon.com slash the Chris and Christine show. You subscribe with us and uh, be a patron, as it were, and we will send you a link to that video. Yeah, so that's kind of our different approach now, and that's part of being a patron of our show is you get the behind the scenes looks that typically would have been on our website, but um, we keep things a little bit more private now. And so if you'd like to have access to that, follow that link that Chris was telling you about. And then, uh, yeah, going into Thanksgiving, we did have a nice little Thanksgiving here. It was kind of a last minute put together. We would originally planned to host Thanksgiving here and have a couple of other friends, um, my friend Rowena and um, Chris's parents and then possibly the kids. But when he got sick, we just had to, you know, for the safety of everybody else, just say we weren't going to be able to host it. Uh, But your parents had already been exposed to the germs. And so on Wednesday, um, I so I'd ordered through Instacart this little tiny turkey breast. It was like three pounds and some potatoes. And I thought I would just cook for just you and I. But Then I was texting with your mom and she said they were just going to go to Black Bear Diner for dinner. And I just felt horrible. Like, I can't let your parents go to the diner by themselves on Thanksgiving. 
Like, that's just makes me so sad. Oh, I know. I mean, yeah, so we invited them over, and it was just a small little get-together. And it, by the way, you did a fantastic job with Thanksgiving. You Thank had all you. the good stuff, the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the green beans, the, the cranberry sauce. Oh, my God, that was another level. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I loved making all of that. And uh, so I got this little butterball turkey breast. It was like an herb-seasoned turkey breast. And they give a little gravy packet that goes with it. And so I use the little roaster bags in the oven, which keeps the the turkey moist. And it only took like hour and a half, two hours to cook in the oven, which is oh, super cool. And speaking of which, leading up to Thanksgiving week, we did buy a brand new oven for the house. Yeah, we did. And so and I had all of the decorations for Thanksgiving, like I got cute little charger plates and like little turkey themed plates and sparkling cider. I was the most prepared I've ever been. And then it was like, wah, 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 I'm not going to be able to entertain. Uh, well, you did, though. I mean, you entertained I me and my parents. And I did. We, we all appreciate everything you do. Oh, thank you. And because the, we hadn't been feeling well in the days leading up, typically I would like have a bake a where I'd bake all of these pies, but I wasn't going to be baking and risk getting like any type of germs in the food and getting anybody sick while I was contagious those days leading up to Thanksgiving. So shout out to my friend Aubrey Beckman from Heritage & Co. Desserts and Design here in San Diego. She was making her holiday pies. She typically does wedding cakes and things like that. Um, But I was able to snatch up several of her pies and we got a pecan, a maple bourbon pecan pie, brown sugar pumpkin, and then a caramel apple pie. Oh, my favorite. You say caramel and apple and pie. Those are like the the three words that need to go together always. (laughs) And And it really tasted like there was like this caramely glaze and there was like a crumble and oh, it was so delicious. By the way, I finished that the other day. I saw that. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, you know, we were able to resurrect Thanksgiving just a little bit and it was small, just the four of us, but... You know, more than anything, I was grateful that, first of all, that we were able to be in our new home and have a little bit of Thanksgiving. And second of all, you know, this is our second major health battle in uh, November of like November 2020 is when we started to come down with COVID and November 2021, we were fighting bronchitis. And more than anything, I'm thankful for health and I'm thankful that you and I made it through that rough week before to be able to have Thanksgiving together. Amen, sister. I thank you. I yeah, I'm very thankful for a lot of things, and, you know, and in my health, although it is not up to 100 percent, I am on the mend, I guess, as you say. Yeah, I'm trying to get better. And I am taking the pills and the vitamin C pills. And, and I remember the week we were on vacation, we were actually out of town. I forgot to take my daily vitamins because I always take like vitamin C pills every day. And I always take like the uh, one a day daily right. men's health vitamins every single day. And that particular week, I don't know if it had anything to do with anything. I'm not saying this, but but that week I didn't take those because I didn't have them with me. Right. So maybe I start taking those more often. Yeah, maybe. But, you know, I was, I was thinking about this as I've been reflecting on this episode, which, um, you know, one of the things that we like to do occasionally is not have a guest and get back to kind of our roots of just having like conversations and you know, our little nugget, our takeaway of learning for our listeners today, Chris, has made me reflect on like handling cl- conflict with your significant other or close family members around the holidays. And, you know, we were able to make make it through that really significant conflict that we had prior to that wedding. And we've been able to kind of normalize things and kind of minimize the excessive emotions. But what would be your tips for our listeners around managing emotions and managing conflict around the holidays. First off, take time to just do a quick little mini time out for yourself. If possible, step away, kind of reset and kind of think about everything. Breathe and just kind of like let um, – if you have to go outside and get away and kind of like scream into a vented car, a car <laughs> that's like no one can hear you and kind of get away and, and do your thing, kind of recompose and, and also take it one step at a time because um, – you know, like you try to like manage too many things. Sometimes it can be overwhelming and you get really stressed right. out. People do. And and also, too, don't be afraid to help out others, too. Like say, say, hey, honey, what do you need from me right now? What, what, what can I do to take some stress off you? Like, do you need me to do this one thing? I can handle that or you can focus on another thing. Teamwork is key, I think, in a lot of those kind of things. Because sometimes people will try to like do everything themselves and try to be a one man show. I know I do. Right. Especially with like the podcasts and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, I think it's very stressful and things like that. So 
and try to give you time to reset, to breathe, to refocus, regroup, and try to, um, I mean, I know the holidays can be a lot for a lot of people. Right. It can be stress. It can be joy. Um, it seems like a lot of stress in it. And sadly, sadly though, I think the holiday season is one of the highest suicide rates uh, any time of year. Yeah. Suicide, depression, and anxiety. And so I think that your tips are really helpful. And then I think also on the other side, as being a person who I, so I'll, I will fight back if we get into a fight, but I typically try not to initiate. Um, I'm more of a like slow teapot, like, like simmering, simmering, simmering. And like when somebody turns up the heat, then it's like, you're going to hear me. So I think that for me, um, one of the pieces of advice that I would give to those that might have those big emotions and be like expressing those big emotions is just be aware of how acting on those big emotions makes others around you feel. And so that's one of the things that Chris and I have talked about is that like when he has these big explosions of emotion, even though he's not angry at me, it feels like like the fallout of that makes it feel like I've done something wrong. And so just being mindful of those that are around you and how your emotions might be alienating them so that you know how to kind of help regulate a little bit better. And I think that's like the name of the game around the holidays is we get really caught up in like the stress and some people feel financial pressures because of, you know, shopping for Christmas and other, you know, holiday celebrations and kids are acting a fool and all of that kind of stuff is just like giving yourself space to get regulated again in terms of your emotions. Because I think that we tend to know that the tsunami is coming and sometimes we just don't pause, like you're saying, and give yourself a break to kind of reset. We just like play into the tsunami and then all of a sudden our wave of emotions has has not just crashed over us and made us feel out of sorts, but has had implications and hit everybody around us too. Right, because every little thing anybody does just pisses you off. Like, hey, Chris, how you doing? What do you want? Get away from me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so. Yeah, and then it just affects everybody. And, you know, one of the things that my mom taught me, and it was a Bible verse, and I know we, we don't like get really religious here, but it, I think it's very sage advice is it talks about like um, the emotions of the father and um, like it says, fathers don't prov- do not provoke your children to anger. And I think about that, like when you think of the man of the household and your emotions, it really can steer the entire house, right? Right. Absolutely. You know, like like you are the captain of the ship. Everybody looks up to you as being the father of the house. They try to look up to you. You try to keep it together. And if you get out of control and go spiraling out of control, like we have sometimes uh, on occasion. And, it, and then it tells the others what is acceptable behavior. Because if you think about that, if you're – whether you're a single parent running the house, whatever your emotions you demonstrate, that sets the tone that that type of emotion is acceptable for everybody else to express, right? And then it goes downhill from there. Yeah, because if you think about it, if you're out, you know, having these big emotional outbursts and the children see – and, and your partner sees, then they feel it's all acceptable to have those types of emotional outbursts at one another. And then you start building this toxic cycle that reinforces over and over again. And so the way to break the cycle is to pause and reset. Right, Chris? Absolutely. Take a pause and a reset. Like this podcast here, baby. You got any more else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? No, I just want to encourage everyone if the Thanksgiving holiday was a little bit rough for you, if you're feeling a little bit blue, if you're feeling a little bit more triggered and sensitive, just know that there's others that are feeling that way and you're not alone. We would love it if you reach out to us. We're not therapists, but we have good listening ears. We'd well, love to Christine, chat with you. Christine actually is physically a doctor. So. Well, not a medical doctor. And I'm a lord. So... <laughs> But no, in all reality, we're we're not professionals, but, you know, we just want to encourage all of our listeners out there to stay happy, healthy, safe and sane during this holiday season that can kind of dysregulate everybody. Right. Absolutely. And if you want to find out more about the Chris and Christine show, you always can go to the source that is Chris and Christine show dot com and you find everything you want to know right there on the website. Yep. So thanks for sticking with us and we will be back with you next week.